the media production presents Gypsy Soul. Your one-stop shop for letting out your inner gypsy. Join Denise Marsh as she brings on a variety of guests to share their artistic vision with the world. Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of Gypsy Soul. I'm Denise Marsh, your host, and I'm so happy to be with you guys. It's been a minute. I'll use the expression. It's been a minute. Um, I haven't been here for a couple of weeks and boy, did I miss you guys and the people here and nothing but hurricanes and tornadoes and like messes. And I was lucky that I didn't have devastation where I was, but I know a lot of people that did and uh, people are still going through it now. <clears throat> So happy to be with you guys on this thriving Thursday. I hope everyone's doing great. Just to give you some random news, I don't know if you know this or not, but today is National Bologna Day. So if you have the Oscar Myers theme song in your head, sing it. Because <laughs> uh, I can't get it out of mine after I heard it today. So I wanted to give you guys some good news. Glad to be back with all my gypsy souls. My brand new book, Book three is out on Amazon and Kobo, and it's already bent, but that's okay. Very excited about it. I've been reading you guys a lot of the poems from it, and uh, just super proud. It was a labor of love, lots of blood, sweat, and tears, um, and even with the editing process, going over and over it again, and uh, sleepless nights, and the book was born. Very, very happy with it, and I wanted to share one of my favorite poems from the book, which is called A Connecting Flight, just like the title. And I've read it before on here, but I wanted to read it to you again. And let me show you something cool about the book. The book has a butterfly on every page. Isn't that nice? And my cover was actually designed by one of the producers here, Joshua Martin. So very proud of the cover. It's very beautiful, very inspiring. So here we go, A Connecting Flight. The wishes we crave at heart, the dreams dancing on lullabies, every thought of newness and novelty, basking in the glow of passion and progress. None of this manifests quickly or easily. There is no shortcut to fruition. It all begins with a connecting flight. One of my favorites. You guys can get this book on Amazon or Kobo. Kobo is for people in Canada. And if you get the book and you love it, I hope that you'll consider writing a review because reviews fuel books. You climb up the Amazon chain, I call it, when people have reviews. The less reviews you have, you're at the bottom of the food chain. So if you love the book, which you will, consider doing a review. So while I'm on that, <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about today's guest. Um, I actually met today's guest about, I would say, like two years ago or so, um, we hit it off right away. I met him at author Heidi Hess's Read It, Write It event um, festival. And um, we just got along really well. We're both poets. And his name is David Greshel. Mm -hmm. um, not only is a, he a poet and an author, but he's also the owner of Neon Sunrise Publishing. When we return from break, we'll be reading one of his pieces to you. He's truly an extraordinary person, and he is letting out his inner gypsy today. <laughs> he will be reading one of his poems when we come back from a commercial break. So see you guys in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere, because we have a great show for you. Hey there, have you heard of the new show, Gypsy Soul? It's hosted by the one and only Denise Marsh. Listen in as she helps you release your inner gypsy with the best in South Florida with plenty of special guests, with their own talents to inspire your inner gypsy. Tune in every other Thursday on your preferred streaming platform. Are you tired of long lines and fitting a car detail into your busy schedule? Magical Touch Mobile Detailing will come to your home or office. Small cars, big cars, and even trucks, no job is too big. We specialize in ceramic coating, removing tough stains and dog hair, and will travel as far as Boca and Jupiter. Visit us at www.MagicalTouchMobileDetailing.com or call for a free estimate at 561-255-8968 and ask for Romain. All right. 
So, this thinly veiled attempt at undead philosophy. There's so much I can't explain. The entirety of human history dangling beneath my fingertips and I'm still no closer to rationale or within sight of a valid reason to present this excuse as anything but my attempt at deflection at avoiding the pressing question. What I know is this hunger. It never sleeps, never rests, entangles my desires in agony, a fire at molecular levels that scorches my needs whenever I open my eyes, and I swallow empty curses driven by unseen demons. The light will soon fail, leaving open the call of the dark, the shadowed night, and the irresistible urge to feed. That is so powerful. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited that you're here, Dave. Thank you. I'm Thank call you for you having Dave, me. Not Dave. Um, you, you guys have to see this display of, of books. It, it's so beautiful. The display that Dave has out here, he's got his anthology, he's got his works. There's five of them. Yep. And then he's got five anthologies. So whenever we get a close up on the table, you'll get to see that. Gorgeous book covers, very deep, very great poetry, and amazing imagery. Thank you. So, Dave, <clears throat> yeah. um, we've got a lot of Halloween vibes going on here, which is good for the month of October. Yeah, Almost at Halloween. Absolutely. Are you doing anything special? Uh, special? Probably not. I might go to a party. I might go out and see a local show. So we'll see. I'm going to turn off all the lights <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so I don't have to give out candy because yeah. candy is like $27 a bag right now. It is expensive. So no for chocolate Halloween for the candy. kids. They're getting Skittles. They don't, they don't come by my house these days. They so don't come okay. by mine I either. I buy the candy for me and it's fine. Yeah, I know I eat it, so I can't <laughs> buy it. So, so Dave, um, I, I feel that your poetry is very powerful with imagery, okay? Mm -hmm. So when did you start writing poetry and what inspired you? So, I started writing poetry probably, I was 14, 15. Um, I had a lot of things to say. I had a lot of emotions that I didn't know how to express. Uh, poetry was a way to do that. Poetry was a way to uh, have a bit of catharsis and, you know, we don't, we don't express emotions well <laughs> at that age. I feel like at least not then we didn't. Uh, so I started writing poetry. I started writing whatever I, whatever I came up with and I, I never stopped. I never stopped. Did you publish very young? No. Uh, in fact, I had some, so I had some works that were in like school, um, school anthologies. Uh, in high school and in college, um, but it wasn't until it wasn't until I had seen I went to see a band that I liked, uh, and their singer had his own self-published works on a, you know on the merch table, and I was like, oh, you can do this on your own. You don't have to just you know wait until hopefully somebody discovers you and wants to give you a big contract or whatever, which doesn't happen very often, unfortunately. That's um, true. <laughs> so so I you know I realized at that point oh I can do this online but it was probably 2012 when I, I decided so I was I was well on at that point. <laughs> so you said that uh, poetry is a, probably still is a catharsis mm -hmm. for you. I feel the yeah. same way about mine. Did yeah. you were the teachers scared with any of your poetry? I don't poetry? know about scared. Uh, <laughs> there were I mean because I I definitely got encouragement. I, we actually had a creative writing class as one of my English credits when I was a senior. Which was, un, which was not normal. I mean, you, typically they want you to take English Lit or whatever, and I didn't want to do that. Uh, so I, I took the creative writing class, and it was great. He was very encouraging. He pushed me to just like, why did you use these words? Why did you, you know? And I, that was very helpful, because nobody had really done that before, other than just to say, oh, well, write this like this. You're trying to write a haiku. You're trying to write quatrains. You're trying to write an iambic pentameter or whatever those you things. You had your own style. Yeah, I have always done free verse. It's always been the thing that me speaks too. to me. Yeah. I, I think it makes it more real for people. Yeah. And I think uh, uh, people feel less threatened that they can understand yeah. it because yeah. that's the whole thing with poetry. I think a lot of people don't appreciate it because they feel threatened that they're going to get the wrong meaning or yeah. not the meaning of what the poet's trying to say. Sure. So I think when I said scared, I... Probably should have used a different word. I just meant like some of your poetry is very deep oh, yeah. and profound. Yeah. And, um, you know, some of the words, like re they really make you think. So, yeah. you know, being a teacher, I would, I think, you There know. were probably, I definitely got questions about why this word, right. you know. And, <laughs> I, I, and I definitely, I definitely have, you know, learned how to express things in ways that are um, maybe not quite so uh, disturbing. <laughs> but you, your imagery is so powerful yeah. when you were reading that poem. Yeah. I just, I mean, I'm picturing a whole movie when you're reading <laughs> it. You. That's, that's an ultimate compliment. Yeah. Um, 
So can you tell us about um, your newest works? I, I know you have individual books and you mm -hmm. also have anthologies. Sure, absolutely. So my newest individual work is uh, Shedding Our Grave Clothes. This is my most recent book. It just came out earlier this year. Covers. Um, it, uh, it features all of the work that I've written. I shouldn't say all. Almost all of the work I've written between 2020 and 2023. Um, it, it, whatever I, whatever the output I had, I put into the book. Um, minus a couple of, minus a couple of things that were for very special projects. Um, but I, I really enjoy putting this one together. Um, the title is really a reference to kind of rebirth, regeneration, resurrection, kind of the whole idea of becoming, taking, getting, casting off what was old and coming into something new. Uh, and so while all of the poetry is not necessarily about that, it's about all kinds of things. Uh, my friend Jason tells me that I'm like a jukebox. It's whatever you get, you know, you push the number, something comes out. But that's the best uh, poetry. That's, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Um, but I do also have anthologies. We have two new anthologies that Neon Sunrise is accepting submissions for. Uh, one is called The Warm-Blooded Night, and that is a poetry anthology. Uh, and the other is called The Cold Light of Day, and that is a fiction anthology. They are loosely connected, just in kind of the theme of the titles, uh, but they are separate. One will be only poetry, one will be only fiction. There's no other real theme for them. It's just whatever is great. Whatever. And can people submit um, two? Yes. Can they submit one can to submit the fiction and one to the absolutely. Um, poetry? Absolutely, absolutely. And yes. they could be on totally different subjects. They don't yes. have to be in the same thing. No, no, there's no, no boundaries necessarily. What's uh, the youngest age um, that someone could be to, um, to get a, a poem published in your? Anthology? I would probably, I would probably go with somebody who's a teenager. Uh, okay. Probably 15, 16. Yeah. I would, I would be, I would consider. Um, nice. Yeah. What, what's the oldest? I don't have an age limit. Uh, I always what, wonder that. Like, no. Yeah. No. Whoever, whoever is willing to, to, to take the chance and submit, I'll take the chance and read it and see I if think I think it's worth being in there. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. The, um, it's a very, very, um, yeah. powerful yeah. cover. It really is. The imagery is amazing. I love the black and white as well. Yeah. So a lot of the poetry in there is autobiographical. Uh, sometimes it's autobiographical. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. Um, lesson number one is just because I use I doesn't mean it's about me. Exactly. <laughs> first, I tell people that too. First yeah. person doesn't mean it's about me all the time. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to look at mine later because I have a <laughs> copy of it now. Um, and I'm going to get an autograph as well. So um, what inspired you when you answered this kind of um, to start your own publishing company? I think you were saying that you didn't have to want to have to wait for someone else. I didn't want to wait for somebody else to not that I haven't submitted to things. I've certainly submitted to you know, for publication in magazines and so on, and you get rejection letters and sometimes that gets hard to take and doesn't matter what form of writing you're doing, a rejection letter is almost, if you don't have one yet, you haven't had your rite of passage of being an author um, for submissions really. But I, I've realized from a, a kind of a DIY perspective that I felt like, oh, you can do this yourself, you know? And that's kind of the, the ethos behind Neon Sunrise is that I, I didn't have to wait for somebody else to, to do that. I can put my own stuff out and I do the anthology so that I can give other people that same experience. I loved the very first time that I got my first book that it was, had my name on it, had my images on it, had all of my work in it. That was one of the greatest days. Do you do your own editing as well? I do most of my own editing, although I get a lot of help um, yeah. from that because that's the part that I like doing the least. Uh, it's the same, um, same. But I, that, I loved that feeling. And so the anthologies is a way for me to give that feeling to other people. Um, it's so nice letting other people yeah. shine. Yeah. Yeah it's, yeah. it's a big deal. It really is. And it's nice when people can resonate with your poetry as well. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. you've had people comment on yeah, some of absolutely. the poetry in there. That, when, when people say, I, I can relate to that, that's yeah. I think the biggest compliment. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so you're currently accepting submissions, you had said. Yep. And um, up until what date? December 31st. We're taking submissions all the way to the end of this calendar year. Uh, and then we'll, we, we will be looking to put the anthologies together and get them out into the world. We're going to say 2025. Looking for probably second quarter sometime in April. It was probably what I would like to do, but uh, life sometimes has other plans. So yes. it will be 2025. Just depends on when, if they will both be the same time or if I'll do one and then the next one, we'll just have to see as we get there. It's things to look forward to. Yeah, you got to have those. What is your advice to writers who want to get published, whether they're um, fiction writers or poetry or poets? 
I think uh, so. The best advice I can give is is don't stop trying. Um, I make the jokes about the about the rejection letters, but it's going to happen. That doesn't yes. mean you should stop trying. Um, if I've you want to, them. if you want to be in, you know, have a traditional publishing kind of deal, um, find an agent, find somebody to help represent you and do, you know, represent you to those companies to be able to put the best of you forward into those packages because it's a lot of work and nobody really tells you how to do it. So having an agent that that's what they do um, really helps take the next thing. And it's, it's not easy. It's not a step that I've taken personally because I like, I like doing my own thing. You know what? Uh, um, when you said earlier in the interview about like, you, you, you felt like it was like a music you know, mm -hmm. star, like yeah. trying to make their first break. I, I, I find that because I've tried to enter poetry contests yeah. too, that they're looking for a specific thing. Yeah. They're looking for a specific voice and image. And, and with my own poetry, it doesn't go with, mm -hmm. it's more free verse like yours. Yep. It doesn't go with a typical haiku or <laughs> line by line. And, yeah. and when I try to make it that way, it wasn't me because yeah. that's not who I yeah. am. Um, so, but it seems like whenever I read like of, of the winners and I read that, not that their poetry isn't wonderful because it is a lot of times, right. but sometimes I'm still trying to understand and I'm like, is yeah. that the poetry that people want to read the, the po that get awards for the people, the things that pe most people wouldn't understand on uh, everyday basis or your everyday Joe? Uh, I mean, I don't know that that's necessarily what everybody wants to read. I, I think that there's definitely a, there are things that thematically resonate with a lot of people. Yes. Um, and it comes down to the other part with poetry in particular is, is are you doing it because you want it to be written and have people read it as written word or do you want to be a performance artist and you want to actually read your poetry whether that be slam poetry which i have witnessed and i have a friend that does and i think is really cool to go and see it's not something that i think i would feel comfortable with <laughs> but i love to see it because it's such an amazing it's, 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 yeah, a, it's, it's an, an amazing art form um but doing spoken word is is something that's completely viable for anybody who writes um but there is you know there is an art to it there is a way that you then have to take the work that you maybe wrote down and structure it in a way that you're going to read it so it's more like a performance like you're getting up and doing drama if you're doing a soliloquy or you're and doing it takes a dialogue practice. Monologue. yes like lots I, of practice. when i used to read my poetry i used to read it too fast and yeah. when I do open mic, I learn that. Yeah. I, I learn to like pace myself and yeah. breathe, and show emotions. It, you really are putting on a performance, yep. Yep. When, especially when you read it. Yep. I remember it was hard to hear my poetry out loud. <laughs> like I yeah. remember, do you ever go through that stage where yes. you'd hear someone read it and yeah. like you look Every, a little bit? Uh, yes, because <laughs> I would hear somebody else read it and go, oh, that's not how I would do it. Right, or, or right, right. But, but at the same time, I, I've always been honored when somebody wants to read Me it. Me too. Because it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. And it sounds so different when someone yeah. else reads it. Because you're getting, you're getting their experience of what you wrote. Yeah. And that's really cool. And then sometimes when they read things a certain way, you're like, wow, I didn't know that that line stood yeah. out that, like that. It's a different perspective. For sure. Um, so where can we see more of your work or at least, you so, know, the work that you have here? So, um, well, my, all of my work is available on Amazon. So if you, if you're using Amazon, you can get to, you can get to that. Just look up my name, David Greshel. Um, you can come see me if you're a Florida local, if you're in the O'Galley area, November 9th, I will be in O'Galley, uh, at the punk in the district. It'll be an all day music festival. It's free. Uh, and I will be, I'll have, a, I'll have my table out. I'll be selling books. So that's another way. Uh, if you find me on Instagram at Electric Infamy, you can read any, everything that I write that's new. It gets posted. Uh, and then I collect them afterwards and, and share them, and put them together for the book. It's exciting. Yeah. Sure. Um, we're going to go to a short commercial break. And when we come back, Dave is going to read us some more of his amazing poetry. <laughs> All right. Hey there. Have you heard of the new show, Gypsy Soul? It's hosted by the one and only Denise Marsh. Listen in as she helps you release your inner gypsy with the best in South Florida, with plenty of special guests, with their own talents to inspire your inner gypsy. Tune in every other Thursday on your preferred streaming platform. Are you tired of long lines and fitting a car detail into your busy schedule? Magical Touch Mobile Detailing will come to your home or office. Small cars, big cars, and even trucks, no job is too big. We specialize in ceramic coating, removing tough stains and dog hair, and will travel as far as Boca and Jupiter. 
Visit us at www.magicaltouchmobiledetailing.com or call for a free estimate at 561-255-8968 and ask for Romain. go david Grashel reading from his poetry book uh, all right this one is called chasing white whales and toy sailboats so, somewhere in the distance it shimmered an unknown anomaly refracting daylight in ways that can't be ignored never getting any closer never changing in scope it just glittered out on the edge beckoning to overactive imaginations baited hook line and sinker we sailed out in search of answers Sought solace in the disappearing sun, chasing the glitch on the horizon, losing our dreams one by one. Still, we persisted in defiance, immortal till the quest is done, sharing space with famous monsters, breaking monkeys with money and guns. A question hangs in our minds. What about tomorrow? We're off the edge of the map with no land in sight, and Leviathan unbound, waiting to devour. You know, that poem is so time sensitive and time appropriate <laughs> with everything that's going on now. Yeah. I just, I have to say, I won't get political or anything else, yeah. but that poem goes. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'll say, that poem goes. Yeah. So, how do you, we talked about this a little bit before the interview. Mm -hmm. How, um, Dave, do you come up with your, um, your titles for your poems? <laughs> So the titles for me are, an, are I, I don't want to say it's an afterthought because that seems like blasé, but it really is. It's the last thing that I can do most of the time. Um, I, I very, very rarely start with a title, with a title in mind. Uh, but usually I get to the end of a work uh, and I, it's usually something that I either I think is funny. Uh, it's something that's a reference to something in the poem itself that I'm, that I'm just seeing if people notice. Or it's an inside joke or something that is just a re an off-kilter reference that I'm just waiting to see if somebody noticed, if somebody got it. Like that one in particular, Chasing White Whales and Toy it's Sailboats. It's a great title. It's a reference to, but it's a reference to Moby Dick. Because yeah. the, Chasing see, the White Whale. See, I didn't get that. Yeah. That was one of the most boring yeah. books I've ever read <laughs> in school. <laughs> but I know, you know, I yeah. remember what it was about and all yeah. that with the whale, but... See, yeah. so someone would have to have that. Somebody like, would have that. Have, if they have that frame of reference, they would go, oh, I, I get that. I, I understood that. <laughs> but you know what? Even if you don't, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a great title. Yeah. And, you know, it makes you think that the poem is going to be about something different. Right. And then you're surprised. Yeah. So I like it. What's one of your favorite titles? Oh, man. So one of my favorite ones that's currently, and it's in this, it's in this book, uh, it's called Lightning Flavor Aid Seltzer Assessment. Uh, which is just a, a just a weird jumble of names, but it's also a like a, a Kmart version of the Kool Aid acid, electric Kool Aid acid <laughs> test uh, that Tom Wolfe wrote in the about the uh, Ken Casey and the Mary Franksters from the 1960s. Um, and I just like oh I love the electric Kool Aid acid test book was amazing. If you never read it, check it out. But I was like oh I can I am just gonna do a tongue in cheek version of that, and then I wrote my own version. Yeah. So it, just the titles alone are entertaining. Yeah. Um, so, how can people get in touch with you? They, they can go to your website? They can go to the website. Um, easiest way is if you find me on social media, if you find me at Electric Infamy on, on Instagram or Threads or Facebook, it will take you there. Or at Neon Sunrise Pub. Um, you can go to neonsunrisepublishing.com. Uh, that will take you to all of the information about the books in particular. Uh, it'll take you if you're interested in submitting. Uh, the very the top level blog post there has all of the submission requirements. Uh, so that's something if you're going to neonsunrisepublishing.com or neonsunrisebooks.com, either one. And I think you, you said that you have an event coming up. And I do have an event coming up. Yes, event uh, November 9th, Punk in the District. It is in O'Galley, Florida. Uh, and I will be there all day. It's a Saturday. It's a free event. If you like music, if you like heavy music, you like punk music, come hang out. It'll be cool. And you need to go to Dave's event. But before Dave's event, you need to go to my event. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Which is actually the day before. Got to get that in there. That's right. <laughs> it's called uh, Poetry and Wine Under the Stars. And it's actually at uh, Cugini um, Winery, which is in um, West Palm Beach, actually in Wellington. It's a very beautiful place. They have wine, test wine tastings, not testings. And um, they have different events there. And um, you're going to get a, a, a copy of the book. You're going to get a poetry reading, music. 
and um, it's just going to be a wonderful, very relaxing night. And you can actually um, get a ticket if you go to kujiniwinery.com. Uh, so go to my event and then go yes. to then Dave's to event. Absolutely. And you'll have two days of poetry. Nothing better than that in life. That's right. Nothing. So magic numbers, five, five, five. Um, <laughs> I'm so happy to be with you guys again. Dave, thank you so much for Absolutely. being on the show. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. I learned Thanks more about poetry, me. more than I even, you know, knew about. <laughs> um, also, you opened me up to different ideas that I go. never thought about. So, inspirations are always great, wherever they come from. I was looking so forward to coming today because I haven't been with you guys in so long. And I'm so happy to see your faces in my mind and free your gypsy souls and have Dave here and share his with us as well. Lots of great guests coming up. Thank you for being you know, such great fans and, and followers. I hope that you will purchase the book. I promise that you will love it. You've actually heard a lot of the poems um, on my show. And consider you know, some submissions to Dave as well. You know, maybe you're getting your you know, creative juices flowing. Maybe you're, you have some interesting titles like Dave does. You know, get in touch with him. Mm -hmm. Think about you have all the way till I think December 31st. Yep. Um, but, you know, I don't want you to forget who you are and, and remember that you need to let yourself shine. It, it might sound cliche, but it's not. You know, there's so many things happening in the world and, and, and there's so much with the politics and negativity and just like, you know, the media just spewing out all this evil all the time. So we have to find the goodness, the goodness in people, the goodness in poetry. Poetry is not dead. Don't think it is. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not. It's actually thriving at this point. Yep. And, you know, when you read something that a poet has written, remember, you make it yours. It doesn't have to even necessarily be what the poet said. It, it's it, whatever resonates to you. Don't be afraid to read poetry or try to understand it because mm -hmm. the message is whatever you think the message is. It's very, very subjective. Yep. Um, I wanted to thank you again for watching the show. I feel like we're growing together. It's been an amazing experience for me. Every time I come here, it's the best 30 minutes. I always say that. And I'm going to see you again for another brand new episode of Gypsy Soul on November 7th. And I have a very, very different kind of episode. Um, you'll really like it. And um, I think there'll be more comments. I, you guys have been commenting more and I really love that. I always try to get back to you when you comment. Don't forget to like follow, share the show. I would be nothing without you guys. So I hope you have a safe Halloween if you celebrate it. I hope that the rest of your October is wonderful. Um, I hope that you appreciate all the little things in your life because the little things make up the big times. And from this gypsy soul to your gypsy soul, you guys have a great night and I will see you in two Thursdays. Good night. Thank you for tuning in to Gypsy Soul make sure to stop by next time for another enlightening show. A show that was produced by Ant Media Productions and hosted by Denise Marsh. <laughs>